Shalom, 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 shalom. First and foremost, giving infinite praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahusha, Ba'ashim, Rechakudash, giving double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shalom, and salutation to all sincere Akim across the four winds, pushing his truth with sincerity of heart. I'm your fellow servant, Kasamagan from the DC camp, coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahushah Ba'ashim, Chakwadash the elect. Now, this is going to be a quick hit, exhortation, edification, and we're going to dive right deep into something that's very, very um common when it comes to this gospel, all right? As Hebrew Israelites, once you understand uh, who you are, you, you, you know, you get the name of the Lord, you get the truth, all right? Now, there's certain things that happen, right? You start to establish a lifestyle according to Yahweh Bashim al Shah, according to the law, statutes, commandments, and most importantly, you know, uh, having faith. And we, in Great Millstone, we prioritize faith because we understand without faith, it is impossible to please the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shah. All right? And that's Hebrews 11 and 6. Now, what you have right here. It's an image of what's called a hedge, all right? And, of course, you have a house. For brothers that do have a house, you understand what a hedge is, all right? Another word for hedge is fence, all right? So we just dealing with basic understanding of protection of your household and your goods, all right? Um, when you're talking about financially. Because one of the things that um, we go through, all of us, all right, Be, you know, from the very top to the very bottom, is that sometimes we get accustomed to a certain lifestyle financially, um, um, whether whether it be um from cars to house to finances to jobs, right? And you know you get accustomed to to having these things for a little while, right? And then it seems like at some point your house kind of uh, gets shaken up, all right? So those things that have always been there, they either get threatened or they get taken away, all right? And you know, and sometimes as a man, especially dealing with the men of Israel, sometimes as a man, you know, you have your self pride and self ego that kind of, um, you know, makes you believe that, well, you know, hey, uh, uh, you know, you lost things, but you could always get it back. So you become super ultra manly looking at these things in a carnal manner. All right. Because, of course, as men, we're supposed to handle our business. Right. But things happen that that are completely out of your control the reason why these things happen is because of trials and tribulations so when you have a hedge of protection you have to understand that for the sake of growth because there's always a bigger a bit a bigger purpose for the sake of growth and this gospel you must be tried so at times um you know the hedge of protection will be uh, open it will be uh, removed all right and you will be exposed to uh, Satan's attacks all right, and now, first, what we want to do, let's go to Adam online, and let's look up the word hedge. The word hedge means originally any fence, all right, living or artificial, all right? Now, what we have as hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, primarily the men of Israel, beginning with the prophets on down, you know, us and our families and our businesses uh, jobs, right? Finances. We have, there's a spiritual hedge um, around us, all right? And it's there most of the time. But I will have to, you have to notice, you have to know that there comes times with that hedge when that particular, uh, when, when that spiritual hedge is basically um, open, is made open to allow Satan. Now, you will say, well, because you know where I'm going with this. We're going to go into the book of Job, right? But we have to bring it, we have to bring the context because you have to understand why the Heavenly Father does what he does. Because you, you, you know, if, if not, then you will blame the Heavenly Father for not protecting you. you know, right? The Lord is protecting your life. And as we're going to, we're going to, we're going to dive into the Lord protects your life. But the things around your life, these things are temporary. So any of the, any of those things can be removed, can be replaced, can be taken away. Anything that's given can be taken away because these things are temporary. It is your fault. You have, you will have nobody to blame but you. It, it will be your fault for attaching your heart, for having your heart and your mind attached to things that are temporary. So if those things get taken away, removed from you for the sake of trials and tribulation and the betterment of your mind, your spirit, 
and your understanding of the scripture, it would be your fault if you were too attached and therefore got your feelings hurt, right? It started tripping, not understanding the big picture. Now, the hedge, it says originally any fence, like we read earlier, a hedge is a fence enclosure. It's an enclosure. All right. So let's go further down. It says a boundary, a barrier. All right. So there's a boundary and there's a, a barrier. All right. And the, the, the Heavenly Father has said that where his angels are camped around the ones who fear him. All right. The hopeful elect. We all have angels that protect us. All right. We have protections. Uh, amongst you know around our, our homes um our children our uh faithful wives the ones that, you know the ones of us that actually do have um women that are faithful to us and then we also have a certain amount of um hedge o around our our finances right but again anything that's temporary those hedges will be removed temporarily temporarily so you know you can actually um suffer attacks basically all right uh and again it's for a bigger purpose so that's what the hedge is so without further ado let's go to job this is job chapter one and uh i'm gonna really read um fast pace again you know we we already know what it is with job but it's just getting to certain points this is job Job chapter one, verse one. All right. Job's character and wealth. It says there there was a man in the land of Uz name whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared the most high and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters, three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Verse five. And it was so when the days of their feasting were going about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed the most high in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now, in this particular verse, verse five, this is where all of us eventually, you know, get, um, cause this is just a natural thing. The scripture speaks about the natural and the spiritual. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that you do that are not sins, but because it's your nature to do that, it gets you to be attached to things that will be, you know, that things that if removed will be detrimental as far as like you would be in a, I'll, play, I'll say you would be in a space where you'll be highly emotional and it'll be detrimental to your journey in this gospel. All right. So, Attachment to children, attachment to finances, uh, attachment to all of these things that are temporary. Um, when those things, if you get too attached to it, like Job has shown, showed right here in verse five, he showed attachment because he made burnt sacrifices for his children. His children were adults. And according to the laws, his children, his adult children were, were responsible for making sacrifices for their own sins. But Job has showed right there, he showed weakness. Right? Although it sounds good and it looks good, you know, and, and it was good, it still showed weakness because Job loved and loved his children so much over, to the point where he made sacrifices for their sins when these were adults and they were supposed to make sacrifices for their own sins. All right. So when you see something like that, which all of us tend to do that, all right, we have certain things that we have on a regular basis. You may have it for a little while, two, three, four, five, you know, six years. And you you start to believe that this is going to be a constant thing. It's always going to be there. Right. You, you know, you might say, well, this is always going to be there until all hell breaks loose. Well, what if you lose that thing? What if, what if you lose that person? What if you lose those riches? What if, what if you lose that that job? What if you lose that woman before all hell breaks loose? What then? What then? Because the Lord never told you. The Lord said if you you know you, you work for your own salvation. 
He never told you in details who he was going to save. You don't even know if you're going you're to be saved. Let, let alone do you know if your children or your, your woman that you have right now, which could also be is, is a high likelihood that she is temporary, just like your job, your wealth, your so-called wealth, your, your riches, your savings. These things, the Lord didn't promise that you was going to take these things with you in the chariot. So these things at any point in time can be taken away from you. And these things can happen before all hell breaks loose. Then what? Do you get offended? Right? Do you get emotional? Do you, do you become bitter? Do you stop doing the work? Do you start having doubt? Do you lose your faith? Every time you show attachment way overboard than necessary, that's when the hedge of protection that the Heavenly Father has over you Gets open. Why? Because Satan would do this. This is what Satan would do. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of the Most High, the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And Satan came along among them. And the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that feareth the most high, and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Meaning, does Job fear the Heavenly Father for nothing? Basically, Satan is, ask, is, is asking the Lord, do you think that Job serves you for nothing? Meaning the love that Job has for you is conditional. And the conditions, this is what Satan is setting on the table. And this is actually what goes on in the spirit realm when brother starts to get attacked in a household, financially, spiritually, all these different things, these, these, these trials and tribulations. You know, this is the process that takes place. And of course, before Satan even shows up, the Heavenly Father, which he controls Satan, he sets this, this whole stage up, this 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 theater, right? This drama when Satan shows up and he believes that he's bringing up a, a fantastic idea of having your ass behind the eight ball, not knowing that the Lord has already programmed, you know, his movements from from ages to make these moves that he's making, right? But for the sake of theater, the Heavenly Father still plays it out, although he knows exactly what's going on. So Satan comes in and he's like, well, Job loves you with a condition. The condition is you made him rich and you have done what? And you have protected his house. You've put a hedge over his finances, right? He believes that as long as he's perfect in faith, right? And he makes his sacrifices. He believes that as long as he does that, right? Nothing will ever happen to him. So therefore, he doesn't have to worry about going off. No doubt. Verse 10. Has not thou made an hedge? There you go with that word. An hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side. Thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. So right then and there, Satan asked the Heavenly Father to challenge Job. Right. Because it was obvious, not only not only to the most high, it was also obvious to Satan that Job had at some point, which is a natural thing that occurs. All right. He didn't break any laws because he still loved the heavenly father, Yahweh, above all. But he started to get too attached to his to, to his things, to his children. Therefore, sacrificing for his children Although again, these were adults. They were they were they were supposed to sacrifice for their own households. All right. So that showed right there that he was overly attached. And that that opened up the door for a weakness, for a trial, for a challenge to what? The trial joke. Okay, so now let's go. Let's see if we can get this in the NLT right quick. Uh this is Job chapter one, verse 10. And the NLT in the states. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. Oh, let's read verse 9. Satan replied to the Lord. 
to the Lord. Yes, but Job has good reasons to fear the most high. See, so so that's what Satan was saying, basically. All right. And when you apply this to your own personal life as a, as a man of the Lord, as a, as a man in Israel, because this is something that happens to us primarily, the men of the Lord, beginning with the apostles on down, the hopeful elect. It's, it also happens to the, uh, the Israelite men that do follow the prophets, right? Especially when you're dealing with household, the hedges around your household, um, the hedges around your finances, your job security, um, you know, relationship security, all these different things. Anything that 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 naturally you would you would be attached to when you get overly attached to the, to those things, you sending out signals of weakness. Where it, you know it's just a matter of time before these things get brought up. Meaning Satan will bring these things up, and you will be challenged, and these things will most likely be taken away from you, or or my or it might be a threat of those things be taken away from you. So you can either see your own reaction to those things to to that predicament, right? And to see if you could better yourself, strengthen yourself, and strengthen your faith. All right, because you don't really know how much faith you have unless you put through um, uh, very uncomfortable positions and trials and tribulations. All right, and and when you're talking about finances, um, the scripture uh, tells you money is a defense. Um, so when you when you start losing your money, your hard hard earned money, um, you start feeling some type of way, especially as a man. All right, because as a man, we're not we're not the things that define us is accomplishment, all right? Our wealth through our wealth. Women is their beauty and their fertility and, and, and all that. Us is a compliment and, and our wealth. So when these things got, starts to be threatened or taken away from you, how you react to these things is really going to show your level of faith at that particular uh, moment, all right? So you have to understand that's the heavenly father. That's the reason why the Lord will allow Satan to make the moves that he uh, makes, this says Ecclesiasticus of the Apocrypha, chapter 11, verse 14. It says prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. All right. So this is a reminder that the reason why the hedge of protection is removed temporarily is so that the things that are temporary in your life. Right. Can be basically removed or shaken. Why? It's always about the same thing. It's always about the trial of the Israelite man. Like I've stated before, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, knows who is an elect, who's part of the 144 and one third. He knows who's part of the two thirds. He knows all of that. All right. When the elect are selected and delivered, none of the heads, none of the elect, uh, everybody in that number. It would not be a surprise to the Heavenly Father. We're the ones that are trying to find out about our destiny as individuals in this gospel. The Lord already knows our destiny because he wrote it from the very beginning. All right. So now let's go back to uh, Job. Now, when you read down, we're going to skip, of course, because the Heavenly Father then. Well, as a matter of fact, let's go to verse 10. Uh, all right, verse 11, it says, but reach out. So we still on the NLT. It says, but reach out and take away everything he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. And this is what the Lord said. All right, you may test them. See that? It's not the Heavenly Father that would test you. He sets up the test, but he has Satan to be the tester. All right, but. You always got to keep your cool and you cannot be emotional. All right. The reason why you become emotional is because you have a, you are overly attached to the carnal things in your life, which, again, like I stated, having that, you know, it's, it's natural. But remember, you're supposed to be a spiritual man. That means you're supposed to transcend when those things within your um in your life, in your house, those those natural things. Right. When you get too attached now, when you get challenged, that's when you're supposed to, the spiritual man is supposed to transcend that and make the right moves and not be emotional and not be bitter, not lose faith. And I have doubt that all of a sudden the Lord is not dealing with him. When the Lord has shown you, has showed you in books like Job that this is what he does. Why does he do it? Because you need this. Uh, you need to be challenged, man. You need this. Okay. <clears throat> 
now verse uh, verse 12 it says all right you may test them the lord said to satan do whatever you want with everything he possesses because those things are temporary okay but don't harm him physically so satan left the lord's presence why because the lord is going to preserve your life this is the salvation of he of the souls this ain't the salvation of you the house that you got the job that you got the car that you got, your savings. So you get offended because these things are being removed or switched around. Or, or, but then that means you you lost focus. You, you, you forgot what this journey is about. Right? Now, when you jump down, as Job is starting, starts to get his ass handed to him because he got too attached to his children, but yet he kept his integrity, Right? Now we go to uh, verse 20, Job chapter 1, verse 20. Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. He said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. So he understood right then and there after it kept on happening. He noticed, which as a Hebrew Israelite, a, a hopeful elect, man of the Lord, you should get to a point when when you start to notice a pattern, right? When things when when things starts to snowball in a a downward spiral, right? You have to just focus, be spiritual, think, look at your past experiences, read the spirit, and understand that hey, you are in a period of trial, right? So you won't be shook because this is not it's not the first time, it's not the second time. Now, for you, for you younger younger brothers, if it is the first time, if the Lord is going, you know, He's gonna, you know, we have the brotherhood. We have, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, we have the brotherhood. So we'll we'll help each other, right? But you know, if you've been through this before, like you 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 gotta you gotta go back, go back to the basics. Remember, hey, this is a pattern, and it and there's no coincidence that these things are happening back to back to back. It means that you are in a period of the, of a trial. And things are getting ready to be very, very uncomfortable. There will be changes, right? And you just got to be ready and willing to adapt to the new reality that the Lord is getting ready to set up. All right? Because you are, you're going to change. You, you're you going to become uh, uh, um, something different. Because that's what the journey is about. It's about perfection, right? Which is which is day-to-day day -day perfection. And we constantly changing and, and, and getting closer and closer to who we were really meant to be. All right. And it's just it's an uncomfortable journey. All right. <clears throat> so verse 20, Job stood up and tore his robe in grief. Then he shaved his head and fell to the ground to worship. Right. So Job. And, and that's the thing. No amount of sacrifices. When this when this your time is your time, man. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand that it's you. Know, it's, and like I made a statement uh, to one of the bros, you know, because we all go through this. And, and, you know, sometimes, again, as a man, you're like, oh, nah, man, I'm going to stop the bleeding from happening. You can't stop the bleeding from happening. It's happening. It's going down. You just got to really strap up emotionally, mentally, spiritually, because it's going down. You're going to take some L's, right? The picture, the picture that you're looking at right now is going to change when you look around you, right? Look around and, and you know, sec being circumspect around you, your family, your finances, your woman, all these things are going to change. But when those things change, who are you going to be? Are you going to fall away with, the, with those things? Right? And have Satan, you know, look like he was right about you? Or are you going to stand strong in your whole body you know, shot and say, just like Job said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. Meaning you ain't come to this world with all this bullshit, man. And the Lord, Yahweh Shah told us that these things were temporary. So just because you have it now, always be ready that these things could be gone tomorrow. But you still have your whole body shim out shy. You still got the brotherhood. Uh, you can still start from scratch. If you know what I'm saying, that's just what it is, man. If you fall in, if you if you fall on your feet and your woman wants to leave you, let her leave. I mean, that's good. Right? Your house get taken away so effing wet. Let that go. Let that go. Because deeply you're gonna you're gonna develop callous. You're gonna be stronger. All right. Sometimes that's what it is. Now, sometimes you could just be shaken. It could just be a threat. 
to see if it's going to be taken or not, how you react to it. But if the Lord sees that you've gotten way overboard and gotten attached to these things, he's going to take those things away. If he loves you, if he's dealing with you, he's going to snatch those things. He's going to let Satan snatch those things out your life. All right. <clears throat> um, verse 21, he said, I came naked from my mother's womb and I will be naked when I leave. The Lord gave me what I had and the Lord has taken it away. Praise the name of the Lord. In all of this, Joel did not sin by blaming the Most High. All right. So why? Why didn't he? Because he understood. All right. He understood what the Lord was doing. He understood that he had gotten overly attached and he understood that at the end of the day. Right. It, it was all about him being tried. Right. And he was going to have to take this L for a greater cause. And as we know, we know how the story ends. Right. The story ends with Joel receiving double. But he had to let go of the children that he had and the wealth that he had. And he had to suffer. He had to go through grief. Very important, man. We shouldn't forget that. But at the end of the day, what did he do? He didn't sin. He didn't blame the Lord foolishly. Proverbs 18 and 10, it said, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Another word for tower is a hedge. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And it and is safe. The reason why you have the things that you have in your possession is because of the name of the Lord. All right. It's because of your how about Shimmy Al It ain't because of your ability to go get a job. It's not because of your ability to hustle. Right? Because cats can get get into this mouth. Yeah, yeah, I got this because I'm a hustler. Man, you got what you got because the Lord gave it to you. And the Lord can take it away, you know, like just like that. Just like that, he can take it away, man. That's why you have to keep be humble. Ecclesiasticus 40 and 26. We're going to end with this. It states, riches and strength lift up the heart. But the fear of the Lord, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, is above them both. There is no want in the fear of the Lord, and it needeth not to seek help. I'm going to read that again. Riches and strength lift up the heart, but the fear of the Lord is above them both. All right. So riches and strength. Yeah. I mean, you get great confidence the more you acquire wealth. You know, you look at your bank account and the money, you know, you're saving some bread. You know, you got this, you got that. You're like, okay, cool. You're not like rich, but you know, you got some, yeah, you got some money. Then all of a sudden you get this snowball effect of just calamities, right? Small calamities, one after the other. And you just see that money, you see just that money bleeding out, bleeding out, bleeding out. And you just like, yo, what the hell going on? And you might get a phone call while the money bleeding out. You get a phone call all of a sudden, out of nowhere, people with the job tripping. And yeah, the job is collapsing. You, you let go and you're like, oh, shit, the sky is falling. You know, now that's when you got to go. You got to go back to the basic. If you root it and you hold by Shemel Shah, you know, this is the bleeding. Right. So you just got to you just got to you got to weather the storm. You got to weather the storm and know the storm is coming in is going to clean. It's going to clean house. Some people going to go. All right. Some things are going to go. All right. When the storm passes, the house going to be looking different. It's going to be looking a lot lighter. You're going to be able to see a lot more in your house because the house is cluttered. All right. So you have to. That's the outlook that you have to have when these things is happening. All right. <clears throat> so um, there is no want in the fear of the Lord and it needeth not to seek help. All right. So basically, that's all I had for the day. Um, hopefully you were edified as I was. You know, that's the um, the lesson for the day, man. It's just a hedge, man. Remember, it's the hedge of protection of your whole body. Shemel Shai. You know, without that hedge, man, everything that you got can be taken away. And the Lord will remove the hedge at times to allow Satan to, to go in there and do some work. But always remember, man, it's for the better, man, it's for a greater cause. You know, these are these are trials and tribulations that you need to elevate to the next level. Call Halam La Yahweh by Shemel Shah, double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutation, all your sincere occupants across the four winds, pushing this truth for sincerity of heart. Because I'm a guy from a DC camp. Shalom.